West Ham supporters have travelled north and the man they have to thank for the trip is 19-year-old Tony Cotty with four goals in two games against Wimbledon. He made his FA Cup debut here at Old Trafford two years ago. With the exception of Alan Devonshire, all his teammates have shaken off the worst of the flu virus and Jeff Pike was passed fit after a groin injury. It's West Ham's third FA Cup tie in six days. Manchester United field the side which beat Videoton. Brian Robson plays in the reserves, but there are two men here with a special reason for wanting to beat West Ham. John Gidman was in the Everton side, beaten by the Hammers in the 1980 semi-final, and Frank Stapleton was in the Arsenal team, which went the same way in the final that year. Referee Trelford Mills from Barnsley. West Ham wearing white, playing from the right in the first half. And the prize here, a place in the semi-finals, which could be decided as Whiteside concedes the first free kick by who is the fresher team after a congested week for both clubs, especially for West Ham, who've got Alan Dickens on the ball now. Stewart. Nice touch by Dickens. Goddard. And a good effort, too, by Goddard, who's really found some form just of late. He played extremely well against Wimbledon and has come back to form after a poor patch earlier in the season. He got a hat-trick, in fact, in the third round against Port Vale, and he wasn't far away there. through the middle of the Manchester United defence and it was typical West Ham football that Goddard to Dickens back to Pike through to Dickens the midfield player in the centre forward position but his shot was wide Olsen flags up for offside Dickens following up again. Half away by McGrath. The drive was brilliant by Orr. Well, Neil Orr thundered a shot against the crossbar at Wimbledon on Monday night that many of us felt might have come down over the line. And he wasn't too far away from giving West Ham the lead there. Their season depends on this, West Ham. And they're certainly playing like it early on. And Dickens has been involved in their two best moves. bringing down Jeff Pike. So, and Bailey 
fingertipping the ball away from Steve Walter. Here's Olsen. White side hovering on the far side of the box. Alderson trying to follow up. Beautifully brought down, but McGuire in so quickly. And the West Ham fans can be heard loud and clear, and it's not surprising they've had two or three very good moments so far. minutes here. McGrath. Hughes is there. Good turn by Hughes. Splendid goal. Mark Hughes scores his 17th goal of this highly successful season for him. And he shows why he's now number one among the Manchester United strikers. A lovely turn and a sweet finish in a congested penalty area marks him out as the young player to watch which indeed he's been this season so Manchester United are in the lead in the 21st minute and Hughes the first name on the team sheet now in the striking positions here that's one of the reasons why he's finishing Olsen again his all-round game has improved too and when you look again at that goal it goes to show the thing that Bill Nicholson used to say you haven't got to break the back of the net when you score if you place it like Hughes did it's just as effective and West Ham have got to make a substitution because Jeff Pike probably hasn't fully recovered from the groin strain which nearly kept him out anyway he's gone off and Paul Hilton who was born just not far from here at Oldham and played down the road at Berry is into the action as the substitute. Goddard, oh, that was beautifully brought down. Paul Allen out on the right. Four waiting in the centre here. Allen got it across. Hogg! touch inadvertently West Ham deservedly draw level they've had enough of the game to warrant that beautifully brought down by Goddard in the first place released Allen on the right he took on Alberston a good crisp cross but it ricocheted off Graham Hogg and the hammers are level after 36 minutes United lose the lead because West Ham had played some progressive football and although there was an element of luck about the way the goal went in they had good chances earlier which perhaps deserved a better reward so their fans delighted and now Alberston right side into Olsen, right side goes for the return and away by Walford and the goalkeeper is coming so Hogg will go up there now trying to make amends struck in with the corner Stewart again Stapleton's in there with Martin McGrath's header and turned on Who actually seemed to be hit by something before he took that corner, curled the ball.
ball in. Stapleton made a nuisance of himself. McGrath got the header goalwards, but Whiteside was the player whose touch put Manchester United back into the lead. 39 minutes gone, it's 2-1, and quite a cut match. Goals flying in here in crowded penalty areas, really adding to the excitement. Quarterfinals are sometimes tense and tight. This one is wide open. Manchester United twice in front, and the second time, Norman Whiteside, the youngest man ever to score an FA Cup final, he puts Manchester United ahead in this sixth round tie. They lead 2 1 at half time. The one millionth spectator of the season passed through the Manchester United turnstiles today, and more rebuilding work at Old Trafford means 2,000 new seats will replace terracing in that corner with improved refreshment and toilet facilities. The cantilever effect will then be extended, making this stadium arguably the most imposing in the Cannon League. Might be worth pointing out that Manchester United, who have sometimes been accused of inconsistency, are in fact unbeaten in their last seven League and Cup games, all played without Brian Robson, who's been injured, and the man taking a tumble there early in the second half is Mark Hughes. Brush. Here's all. And Potty. West Ham taking the game to Manchester United again and looking menacing. Goddard's in there and the defenders forced to concede the corner. People have said before that West Ham are a soft touch in the north, certainly not these days. Hilton comes to the near post, but Stapleton is defending well. Jesper Olsen turns it inside to Strachan. Now right side charging through the centre. Olsen down the right. And his right side. Great save, Strachan. Brilliant. Hughes wants it too long. Still the ball isn't clear. Duxbury playing the one-two with Hughes. What an extraordinary sequence in the West Ham penalty area. Alvin Martin was valiant there, but looking back on it, what a good save in the first place by Tom McAllister from Norman Whiteside. That save has kept West Ham in the cup. Challenged by Hogg. Martin's in there. Here's Goddard. Headed away by Mike Duxbury. From Paul Goddard. Dickens. Or good cross, Potty was there. Here's Allen. Back again to Stewart. Hughes on the chest. What a good piece of work. Oh, brilliant! Yes, for Olsen. Can he finish it? He's right through, and he allowed Walker to get back. And it was a fair challenge. And the ball from 
Jordan Hughes was absolutely marvellous. It should have made it 3-1 to Manchester United because Olsen has been struggling with an injury. And I honestly think if he'd had full pace there, he would have gone on and scored. But he wasn't quick enough in the circumstances to get away. And Steve Walford valiantly caught up with him. For the second Saturday running, a thunderingly enjoyable match at Old Trafford. Walford on Hughes. and think there was maybe a little bit of slack defending because he did get through fairly comfortably but you have to finish them and that white side certainly did Goddard. still West Ham won't give it up Paul Allen in well here what a good finish and well deserved six minutes to go and little Paul Allen gives West Ham renewed hope a smart move, Goddard got away, he cut Allen in on the inside of his man, and the drive past Gary Bailey brings it back to 3-2 and reminds Manchester United that a two-goal lead is never secure, something that they found out to their cost earlier this season, and Allen says, how long to go, five? That's exactly right. And to enjoy this exciting football, a crowd of nearly 47,000 and bear in mind it's the third big match of the week or in eight days at Old Trafford Goddard beaten by McGrath Strachan Gordon Strachan goes for goal gets brought down penalty would you believe it Manchester United have yet another penalty kick and Norman Whiteside surely will step forward to try and complete the hat-trick. Strachan doesn't want to know anymore. They've changed the kicker, and Whiteside, not because he's on a hat-trick, but because the players agreed he should take them, has gone to get the ball. Strachan brought down as he went straight through everybody, or tried to. but they found a place more importantly in the FA Cup semi-final Manchester United 4 West Ham 2 Tom McAllister dejected Norman Whiteside delighted down the years sparkling entertainment and Norman Whiteside who makes his name whenever the occasion is enormous has certainly responded again a hat-trick for him Mark Hughes was brilliant Manchester United played with a
cross-buckling style which West Ham did their best to match and contributed hugely to the game. But in the end, the hammers go out and the Stretford Ends celebrate Manchester United's 17th appearance in the FA Cup semi-final and their 15th 